Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter, chapter number 3, and we are going to look at verse number 9. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This verse is a very powerful verse that really shows the, the character and nature of God, like who he is in his heart, you know, deep down, who, the, the essence of who God is and what kind, of, what kind of God he is. First, it starts off with, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. So this, the first part here shows that God is, he's an honest God, he's a just God. If he says something, he means it. He will keep his promise. He will, like what, what he says will occur, will happen exactly the way he said it. Um, because God, God is a true God, an honest God. Uh, and he keeps all of his promises. So when God says that, uh, in, like in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, you can take that promise to the bank. You call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Uh, John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can take that to the bank. You, uh, you, you know, you, you believe on him, you put your trust on him, uh, you will have everlasting life. Uh, and and, that, and that's, that means whosoever. That means anybody, anybody at all. Doesn't matter what your sins are, what you've done, though your, skins were, your sins were, were um, red uh, as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, God says. He can forgive all if you just go to him. He has made that promise. And this verse reinforces the fact that he is not slack concerning his promise. All of his promises are sure. It's in his nature. Let's look at the next part. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. He is long-suffering. He is kind. He is gentle. When you read through the, through the Bible, you know, the, a lot of the haters like to take things out of context in the Bible, how, uh, you know, because some of the judgments of God, I mean, they, they're pretty harsh, right? In our opinion, obviously, because we don't want to to uh, be judged by God. Uh, and and um, so, so yeah, the way, the way we view that um, may seem a little harsh. But when you look at the stories of the Bible and the patience that God has, had upon mankind uh, <clears throat> the chances that God gave mankind I mean <clears throat> chance after chance after chance God is a very very patient God and he is a very long-suffering God uh, and you know again if, if uh, it's, it's easy to take verses out of context and fool those who are ignorant, who have never read the Bible. But those of us who, who have read the Bible, those of us who have gotten deep into the Word of God, we know the stories, the true stories. We know the context of all the verses uh, you know, that, that people try to take out of context. We know. If you know, you know, right? We know that God is a very long-suffering God. And especially if we've experienced God in our personal lives, we know that God is a long-suffering God. And the last part of the verse just wraps it all up. Just how long-suffering is God? What is in the true nature's, nature of God? What is it that is in the heart of God? Right here. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is the will of God for all of mankind. Yeah, his judgment is harsh. It has to be. He is a just God. He keeps his promises. But at the same time, that's not his will. God did not create hell for mankind. He created hell for Satan and, and, and the demons, the fallen angels. 
It was never meant for his, for the creation uh, of man that that he created in his own image. It was never meant for us. That's not his will for us. God doesn't want man to be apart from him. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The will of God is for every human being to get saved, repent of their sins, and put their faith and trust in Christ because he paid it all. But he's not going to force you. He's not going to force his will upon you. And so, <clears throat> you know, if, if you're wondering right now, uh, maybe, maybe if you're listening to this, you're not saved. You don't know 100% sure where you would go when you die. Let me tell you, Jesus paid it all. He died on the cross for your sins. All you have to do is call upon him, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is not the will of God for you to perish in your sins, but it is the will of God for all of us, including you and me, to repent and be saved by his grace. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.